Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Wilson at MGH Allergy Associates, and in this video today we're going to be talking about hives. If you like the content that we present today, don't forget to hit the like button over here. And if you want to see more of this, uh, actually, that's my other channel, um, so we can uh, save that for the YouTube. So in this video today, we're going to be talking about hives. Uh, in my practice at MGH, next to environmental allergies or seasonal allergies and possibly food allergy, hives is actually probably the most common thing I see from patients. And before we get into talking about hives, we need to know what we're talking about when we use the word hives. Hives are red, raised, and itchy. And another common term for hives are welts. Now, a lot of rashes or things that people see on the skin are red, raised, and itchy. And we're happy to talk about all of those, but if we want to be talking about hives, we need to make sure that those red, raised, and itchy spots on the skin resolve within a matter of hours, and that they don't stay present for more than 24 hours. If something is on the skin for more than 24 hours, it's not a hive. We need to be clear about what we're talking about because if we're referring to something that's on the skin for more than 24 hours, it takes us down a different path than the common causes of hives. When most people think about hives, the first thing they think about is allergies. And that makes sense because if someone's allergic to peanuts or if someone's allergic to a drug or a medication or if someone's allergic to bees, when they're exposed to those things, they're going to develop hives. And the way that works is the immune system in those cases has made antibodies against the proteins of peanut, for instance. And when the person eats the peanut, the stomach digests the proteins in the peanut and sends them throughout the body. The antibodies against peanut have attached themselves to allergy cells, and those allergy cells then recognize the proteins of peanut and turn on like a switch, releasing histamine throughout the body. And when histamine is released in the skin, it does three things. The first thing histamine does in the skin is it makes the tight blood vessels balloon open. That sends red blood cells close to the surface of the skin, causing the skin to become red. The next thing histamine does is poke little holes in all of those tiny blood vessels in the skin, allowing fluid to come to the surface of the skin, making it raise up. Finally, histamine binds the nerves in the skin, making it itchy. So the skin becomes red, raised, and itchy. That's a hive. But when someone's allergic to peanut and they develop hives, it's obvious. So they eat a peanut and within a few minutes they develop hives. So the first type of hives that we see in the clinic are food allergic hives or medicine allergic hives, or in some cases, contact allergic hives. If patients are allergic to a dog and the dog licks them, they will develop hives. The next type of hives that we see in the clinic are also in the family of acute hives, but these hives are much more frustrating because these hives may occur for one day, two days, or three days, but there's no obvious cause. These hives, may, we think, may sometimes be caused by an unappreciated virus, they may be caused by stress, or oftentimes there's no cause identified at all. And often we refer to these as idiopathic hives. In fact, the most common type of hives we see in the clinic are chronic hives. And these hives occur on a day in, day out basis. And they can occur daily for months at a time, or in some cases, even years at a time. These can be the most frustrating type of hives for a patient to deal with. They have the same appearance as the acute hives and the allergic hives, but in fact, there's no allergic cause for these hives. These hives will be there when a patient wakes up in the morning, which is a good indication that there's no allergic trigger for these hives. In fact, in the case of hives that are showing up on a daily basis for many weeks at a time, we know the cause of these hives, and these are occurring because of an underlying autoimmune condition. In the case of autoimmunity, the immune system has made a mistake and it has started recognizing healthy cells in the body as if they are either infected or in some way aberrant and need to be cleared by the immune system. In this case, the immune system is recognizing allergy cells in the skin, which are known as mast cells, M-A-S-T, as if they're infected or as if they need to be cleared, and it's attacking those cells. When the immune system attacks the mast cells, they release histamine, and once again, histamine causes hives in the skin. While this is an extremely frustrating condition, fortunately it's not dangerous and it does not lead to a generalized allergic reaction. This condition can be quite dramatic and it can result in hives all over the body, but again, fortunately it does not result in anything like closing the throat or a systemic anaphylaxis. The most important part of this condition is reassuring patients that they need to not be worried about uh, identifying the allergic causes for these uh, daily hives and explaining to them the appropriate means for control of their symptoms, 
which are daily antihistamines in most cases. Since histamine is the underlying cause of this condition, using safe and inexpensive over-the-counter antihistamines is often the best way to manage this condition. While this condition can be quite frustrating, it is important to note that it is not a dangerous condition. And while it is an autoimmune condition, it's also important to note that it does not mean that the patients are at risk for other dangerous autoimmune conditions. For instance, these patients do not need to now be worried about developing things like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. There is a risk for increased risk for developing autoimmunity involving the thyroid, and it's appropriate for patients with chronic hives to be screened for that condition. The next step in managing this is to explain to patients how to control their symptoms through the use of safe and inexpensive over-the-counter antihistamines. Now, it's often appropriate and necessary to use higher than usual doses of these, and that's where the doctor and the patient relationship comes into play. Rarely, a patient will require much higher doses than what's listed, and those conversations need to be had. Even more rarely, no matter the dose of antihistamines, the patient's symptoms are not controlled, and in those cases, second and third line agents may need to be used. Now that we've discussed the different types of hives and the difference between hives and rashes or dermatitis, please be very comfortable in reaching out and getting in touch with us for discussing any of the things that may bother you with regard to your skin and your concerns about itching, rashes, or hives, or any of your other allergic questions. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to seeing you in the office. Thank you.